but this was people living peacefully, something we rarely see on the news. Now Marty's passport's gone, then I'll find out if I've got malaria or not. I'm a man, man! I'm a man, man! It was probably two of the most difficult days of my life. This is mad. We're starting here in Bamako, the capital of Mali. We have no idea what to expect from the people here. This is the first time either of us have been in Africa. We have no idea what to expect from road conditions. All we know is that we need seven and a half weeks. It's very, very hot, very dusty, as you can tell. I don't know the exact route yet, but we're planning to ride from Mali to Burkina Faso, keeping well away from the Ivory Coast where some trouble's brewing at the moment, then on to Togo and Benin, where our plane flies out in seven weeks. While Jeff is reasonably well travelled, he's never been to Africa. The rainy season is just coming to an end. The heat and the unpredictability of the weather are shocks that we're going to have to deal with. But culture shock is our first big stumbling block. Mali was a French colony until 1960. As a result, French is the language that unites all of the Malian ethnic groups into one nation. Everyone seems to know how to speak it, but the mother tongues are more commonly used on a daily basis. And Jeff is unable to speak any Bambara, the most common local language, and only a smattering of French. Well, communication is clearly not going to be easy. With a few days to settle in, it's time to move on and get out of Bamako. It's common knowledge that Africa is the poorest continent on Earth, and it's West Africa that ensures Africa stays at the bottom of the list. Furthermore, this country, Mali, is one of the poorest in the world. While it's the largest country in West Africa, it's mainly desert or semi-desert. The arid land and Mali's crippling debt to the World Bank are both major contributing factors to the reality that the average Malian will only earn 250 American dollars a year. We're going to take a ferry trip up West Africa's longest river, the Niger, and stop off at the most legendary city of them all, Timbuktu. Getting there by trike is practically impossible, so we've dropped Pete off in a small town called San and we'll pick him up on our way back through. And this is where our ferry departs. While we wait, we meet our soon-to-be co-passenger, Megan Orwig. Um, an organisation in the United States gave me a chunk of change to study lullabies for a year. Lullabies? Yes. What have you found? Have you found any big culture shops that you Oh, into? God, there's so many. There's so many things. There's something inherently um, different about... I think, I think about emotions in Africa than there is in, certainly in the States. There's no phrase in Bambara that says, I feel. Oh, really? No, it doesn't exist. If you want to say, I'm angry, you say, anger is with me. I have joy with me. Yeah. Is there some part of Africa that you found has grown really warm inside? I really find that when I get really, really down, something always happens to surprise me and to make me remember um, how giving these people are. I'm constantly staying in people's homes instead of hotels because I have so many friends throughout the different cities. And I have never gone to a house and had someone say, ah, oh, we're just too busy or we don't have enough food or we just don't have a place for you to stay. I've never had anyone say this. Every time they've said, yes, yes, come sleep on our roof. And when I try to say, no, I'm going to go buy lunch, they're almost insulted. <laughs> 